my channel welcome if you are new my name is Cameron as I said and today we're gonna be doing just like a chit chat get ready with me this is actually my first time doing a chit chat where I asked you guys for some topics or questions that you wanted me to talk about so yeah that's super fun I thought I would just kind of dig in and see what you guys are interested in learning more about me about getting some questions whatever the case may be and as I was answering my questions I did this little style that you guys can see here um, just a flexi ride set. I have not um, fluffed it out yet. This is the first day and I actually went somewhere. But I was rushing to dry it. So the front piece, as you can see, is a little frizzy. Because I don't think it dried 100%. But we're going to work it out. This is how I did it. Just did like a little tutorial, but like a fun way. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. If you have any questions on the style or anything we talked about, leave your questions down below. Let's talk. I also am doing like a more in-depth, I guess, tutorial on TikTok. So if you're interested in that, I will link that right here. But yeah, let's just get straight into the video. So let's get started. I hope y'all can't hear this fan. I turned my um, AC off because if y'all watch the vlogs you know okay if you know you know my ac is too dog on loud but we're gonna be doing a flexi rod set and i put on my instagram for y'all just give me some questions and topics like let's chat let's talk so i'm doing my first ever get ready with me slash like chit chat girl talk all the things um so yeah let's get into it i figured we would have a glass of wine it's not it's not really happy hour but we're off early and I figure we're all girlfriends, why why not, right? So I'm gonna be drinking the Esperol Vino Verde. Um, it's kind of sparkly, it's like a sparkly, almost um, how would I describe it? It almost tastes like a Pinot, maybe. Let me see, or maybe like a Sauvignon. It has a very like small hint of sweetness not much at all i don't like sweet wine so if you like sweet wine you probably wouldn't like this um if you don't mind just having like a little bit of sweetness then you could try it i get it from trader joe's and it's very good very refreshing i think it's good for daytime so yeah um so yeah give it a try if you're interested also today we are very cozy i have on my favorite amazon um pajamas if you follow me or if you watch my videos you know about these already so yeah let's just get straight into it okay so let's start with the first question so i asked these questions on instagram youtube tiktok all three and instagram i definitely got the most questions um so i'm gonna start there and the first question i'm not gonna say y'all's name because i don't know if like you know if y'all want me to say your name <laughs> but um the first question is how oh we starting kind of we started kind of dark, not dark, but like, you know, kind of deep. But her question was how to deal with toxic relationships slash friendships. And I think, honestly, my the easy answer and my first answer would be to just honestly not deal with them. Because I thought that would be my answer. That's how I deal with that kind of stuff. I don't. I just don't. You know, I don't deal with toxic things especially um relationships i feel like relationships meaning friendships family relationships i don't have those problems because i don't tolerate it almost and i think it's easier said than done definitely but i think you kind of have to set your boundaries for yourself and make you know put yourself around people that bring you the most joy you know who wants to be surrounded by somebody that's constantly bringing them, you know, toxic energy or just like bad vibes. You want people that are lifting you up. So I think this easy, like I said, it's easier said than done. But surround yourself by people that you don't have to question it. And I think that's my, you know, that's my main thing I'm getting at. Like, I like to keep people around me that I don't have to wonder. I don't have to wonder if you're in it for, you know, for me or if you are a good person, if you want the best for me. Mm -mm. And I feel like I'm saying mainly, I'm talking mainly about friendships right now. Because I feel like that's the most, um, that's something that you have the most control over. And something that you may come in contact with the most is, you know, friendships. Because we can make several of those. Relationships, you only, 
you know, your relationship with one person or, you know, if that's how you roll. But uh, friendships, you know, we cultivate different friendships. So, of course, you're going to come into in contact with things that um, would, or with different personalities often or more often than like a relationship or family. With family, I feel like, you know, your family is your family. So it's not like you're going to have to constantly deal with different um, personalities. So once you figure out your family and, you know, I like personally the most, like the easiest way to deal with this is to set your boundaries. You know, long story short, just kind of certain things you don't deal with, certain personality traits maybe may not work for you and mesh with your, you know, your lifestyle, your morals, your boundaries for yourself. And I think you should stick to that. I think once you learn that and you you know, find your people, find your core group of people that you know are there for you and have your best interests at heart, it'll be, it'll be easier. And I know it's, it's easier said than done finding your people, you know, whether that be relationship wise or friendships. Um, I know it's easier said than done, but once you do, I feel like just put that work in and once you do, that'll make all the difference in the world. So my advice would be to not settle and stick to stick to your guns, stick to what you believe in. Don't let anybody, you know, sway you to feel any type of way about, you know, your boundaries. So if you feel like you're involved in like a toxic situation, just get out of it. As easy, as hard as it may be, do what you can to separate yourself because you can't change anybody. And I think that's that's like key to know first. And I think that takes work, but, and like I said, it's easier said than done, so, yeah. And then, the since we're talking about, like, relationships and friends, I saw a question that somebody asked, how did you meet your friends? Um, if you follow me on Instagram or, you know, you've been watching my videos for a while, you know, I've kind of had the same friends forever, <laughs> honestly, and long story short, I've known my friends all my life, like my core group of friends, girlfriends, or even just like um, friends in general, because I have friends that aren't girls that I'm really close with. We all kind of just grew up together and our families are friends. Um, and we just kind of have always been friends and kept, kept in close contact since like childhood and then now we're all adults and getting married and married and grown now so it's beautiful to see and i think that's why um and that may be like why i answered that question the way i did that previous question about like how do i deal with toxic relationships or friendships and maybe that's you know why i answered that way because i don't deal with that because i have found my core people but that doesn't mean that I'm not open to new relationships. And I just know that now, you know, now that I know what I do like in a friend or what is a good friendship, I know what I'm not looking for. And I know, you know, what wouldn't be attracted to me when looking for a friend. So, yeah. But yeah, my friends and I, we've been friends forever. And those are like my sisters. But yeah, we've seen each other through every stage of life and I think that makes for like really good friendships and sisterhood when you can kind of just say that you've been with this person through different challenges and when things weren't so good and then now you know everybody's in their peak or when they, when things get hard you know you've been there through every stage and I feel like that's a true friend like when you can really get through the hardest things together I think you should definitely hold on to that. So, yeah, that's how I met my other girlfriends and my other friends, my guy friends. <laughs> and if you, there's anything like that I say that y'all don't agree with, let me know down below. We can talk because I'm, you know, I'm all for the conversation. How have you adjusted to being a wife? Oh, that's a good question. Um, hmm, how have I adjusted? I think adjustment has been easy, honestly. I think the hardest part has been, and I kind of went through this little phase, maybe like month. We've been married almost six months now. So maybe like month 
three, it started getting real and it was more of like, okay, I'm, I'm back to work. I'm wedding is over. Now I need to like figure out balancing my life. And you know, I run a business and businesses, first of all, I run several businesses. My mind is always on go. I work full time. I'm doing, you know, my content stuff on the side. Um, I have other things going on in my life, family, you have your friends that you want to stay connected with. Um, and then you have your husband and your household that you want to kind of, you know, pour into, especially if, if a brand new marriage. So I wanted to kind of be, uh, what's the word, intentional about getting all of those things done and kind of like just learning how to navigate everything was a, was kind of tough at, in the beginning. And it was, it could be a little overwhelming. I know for me, I was, I don't have kids and I don't have like responsibilities I didn't have responsibilities other than my own until a few months ago. So now that I have a whole house and husband and, you know, other responsibilities outside of my house, it's kind of like hard to juggle and make time for everything and, you know, make sure that you, my thing was I want to still spend time with my family, so I want to make sure I see my friends still. And it's hard when you're doing a million things at one time, but everybody understands and you have to just kind of understand, I think. Um, and so is your husband. Like, if the, if you're in the same boat, I don't know if she's asking because she's also a new wife. But um, everybody knows what you're going. Through. Like, everybody knows the situation you're in, so it's fine, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, once I kind of figured that out and figured out like a schedule, and we kind of got our days that we do certain things, and you know, you start getting into the schedule of having somebody else to kind of make time for it becomes easier and it's it hasn't really been hard but it's it's an adjustment it's something different it's a different life like the song what does the song say matrimony it's a new life it's a new hurdle are you ever really ready for it like literally i feel that i feel that for real like when how do you know you're ready <laughs> i mean you know you're ready but there's always going to be something you have to adapt to so Especially when you, you know, we didn't live together. We don't, we didn't, we had to merge our lives. So, yeah, it was a, it was just like a learning curve for a few weeks. But we're good and it's been really nice. Um, it's fun to have somebody there, like, all the time. Um, I feel like, because Corey and I, we are literally... We are best friends. So I think that's key to like when you live with somebody and you're with somebody all the time, you need to like them. And I think that has helped us like, even like, we've only been married six months now, but, or five months, or a little bit more than five months now. But, you know, through our relationship period, like we just really enjoy each other. We love each other. He's my best friend. So it's not hard to be with him. It's not hard to be married to him. It's just, yeah, you're going through, a uh, big life change so you have to kind of make adjustments in your life but he's not the problem but I'm just looking forward to like seeing our life like I think I love thinking about like how things you know now now I have somebody that I'm gonna be with forever and we're gonna literally do life together and I can't wait to see like just the whole journey and what our life looks like a few years from now or even like a few months from now, I love just having somebody to do it with. But yeah, marriage has been fun and adjusting has been, um, it was interesting in the beginning. Fun, but interesting. When people ask me, how's marriage? I always say fun. And I be thinking that they think it's so weird. They're probably like, hey, what is so fun? Like, but it's really fun. Like, it's just, we've had a good time. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, oh my God. This topic, I feel like me and my friends talk about this all the time i don't know what it is but we do how the question is what's your take on the 50 50 and baby let me tell you this i'm nobody's roommate i'm not 50 50 and nothing with you okay i just feel like okay i feel like there's give and take that's how a relationship should be and i'm guessing you're talking about a relationship because i know that's like a controversial topic like all over the place but um yeah i just feel like 
in a relationship, why like it's give and take. Why am I giving you half? I could go get I could I could look at a room, roommate for that. Like if we're gonna if we're doing that, I don't have to marry you. <laughs> I could live with one of my friends if we're gonna do 50-50. I just feel like it need, like I'm not gonna say who should pay for what or like how the bills or whatever you're discussing, dinner, tab, whatever it is, should be paid. I just feel like it depends on everybody's situation, but I'm not gonna go half and half with you on a mortgage or a rent, and you're not my friend. <laughs> like, huh? I just I never understood that. Now, don't get me wrong. If I do feel like, say, like your financial situations are similar, or you know, some some relationships are more tra traditional, where you know the guy pays most of the bills. Um, some if you know if, if your wife doesn't work i understand she doesn't pay you know if your wife is a stay-at-home wife or mom you know things are different everybody's situation is different say you have two business owners or you have two um like say both the husband and the wife are full-time in school like things are different so i do get that like you know you can depending on your situation things will change but if we both work two full-time jobs i'm not going 50 50 with you i'm sorry now we can figure out some type of situation to make things work but the 50 50 i feel like i could live with my sister for that or i could live with danae like it's not i'm not going there <laughs> like I, I don't know but that's something i feel like girls love to talk about that i don't know why or not i feel like nowadays that topic is like so prevalent and i'm not sure why but I'm just not sure. Is this what the husbands or the men are asking for y'all to pay for the 50, go 50 50? Like, what's, what is, what is he? But anyway, okay. What are your favorite makeup products? I feel like that's like a really hard question because I use so many things. Okay, my favorite, okay, I'm gonna answer it like, what are my must haves in my makeup routine? Must haves are my Benefit brow pencil. Even though I feel like I definitely could get a brow pencil that does the same thing, I love how skinny and precise, like they call it, the uh, Benefit Precisely My Brow is. Only because I don't like super harsh brows. I like more like a hair like, really like airbrush look brow looking brow. So I like a really skinny brush. I mean, not brush, but pencil. So. I would definitely say that. I would definitely say my one size translucent powder. Um, I just feel like I've never had a powder that did as good as that one did, ever. Not once in my life. So I would never be using anything else <laughs> until something becomes better and I don't know. Um, what else? Um, must have my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. My favorite foundation of all time my sister put me on that and i haven't gone back but if i want like a lighter um you know something i'll do the elf halo glow which is more of like it gives me like tinted moisturizer times two so it's really light so it's really light but still um like enough coverage so it's a little bit more coverage than like a tinted moisturizer but still nice and light I feel like my whole makeup routine is kind of like my staples or like what I've found that works really good for me. So even like my Rare Beauty blush, I think it's in the color Fever. I could be wrong. I don't think that's right, but I, it might be. If not, I'm going to put the name across the screen. But um, yeah, that's been my favorite blush that I've used. It's a liquid blush. I don't know why this little section in the back of my head gets so nappy. Oh, do y'all hear that? It's so rough. That's why I always like chop in the back of my head so much because it just be spilling so rough. I don't like that. I'm still trying to figure out like my favorite contour and bronzer. I just been using the same thing because I have it. I've been using the Fenty um, contour stick. I think that's what, I don't know what it's called, but I feel like I definitely could find something a little bit better. Nothing's wrong with it, but it's nothing like crazy to me. But yeah, those are my favorites. Those are my go-tos. Oh, in the e.l.f. Um, hydro Rip 
or is that the, the milk i never tried the milk one but the whatever the elf hydro primer is or the, you know the milk dupe <laughs> do you do in your free time in my free time i like to sleep <laughs> no literally i'm not a i'm not like in my free time y'all my favorite thing to do in life is to go out to eat okay between traveling and going out to eat like you can it's a yes any day if you want to go somewhere oh tell me when where are we going let me grab a ticket i'm coming between that you want to go out to eat oh i'll meet you it's no question like on a budget the budget is scratched especially if it's a new restaurant oh baby i'm coming out to eat if i'm getting dressed up on a saturday night 10 times out of 10 is to go out to eat i don't i don't go out i don't do the club i don't do you know mm -mm, i'm going out to eat and i might catch like a nice like cocktail lounge afterward or something but you will catch me at a restaurant if you're a new restaurant in town you will catch me there okay that's one thing you can bet your bottom dollar i will be there <laughs> that's so sad but it's true that so yeah eating out i love eating out i love getting cute y'all know that um quote on instagram or wherever it is and they be like my favorite thing to do is get dressed up cute and go to dinner whether that be with my husband with my friends with my sister with my family i don't care I want to find a cute restaurant so I can put my cute little outfit on and get cute. Take a few pictures. Why not? What else is what else even is there to do? Like, unless you're going like turn up, and I'm not. That's I'm not the girl for that. Now, if you want to turn up like at somebody's house, cool. But we gotta go somewhere where other people are. Are you trying to give me a heart attack? I'm like what? I'm so dramatic, y'all. What do you and your girlfriends enjoy? I think that's the I think the answer to that is literally the same as what I enjoy. That's what we do. We go out to eat, we get cute, we dress up, take pictures, and then we go eat. We love a girls' trip. I haven't done one in a minute. Probably since my bachelorette trip. Yeah, it was my last like actual only girls trip. So it's time to run it back. We have one of my other friends bachelorette trip coming up next so that's gonna be the next girl's trip and i just love that for us love i love i love a good girl's trip okay but yeah that's what we do we hang or or even just like sitting at the house you know a good like kiki um like a wine night we love a wine night even like especially this time of year we love crawfish so we'll just go sit on a lake have crawfish sit in the backyard with some crawfish on a Sunday and just, you know, family vibes. That's that's my favorite type of day. Okay. Your favorite drink. She said, what's your favorite drink? I'm guessing you're asking like cocktail. Um, if, if it's cocktail, I would say right now I've really been on espresso martinis because I don't know i just like them like, it's not too sweet i don't really like super sweet drinks other than that i love margaritas even though that is kind of a sweet drink but i don't like a super like sugary margarita i prefer more um like lime than sugar so yeah margarita or an espresso martini and then if we're not talking um cocktails like we're talking like non-alcoholic I would say, and I also love wine, if we, if, you know, to, but that's a no-brainer. We're drinking wine right now, which I haven't even had a sip of my wine yet, which is crazy. But, um, yeah, if we're talking non-alcoholic, I would, I really don't drink anything other than water. But if I, okay, I haven't had one in a long time because normally I either, if I'm like out to eat or if I'm at home, I'm either having water or like a cocktail or some wine but if if it if i had to pick something else i would say a shirley temple which i haven't had one in probably years but that's my favorite i'm a water girl so like if i'm not having like a beverage i'm drinking ice water with lemon or even just like a room temperature water love it 
that's the that's the best thing I could drink. I love water. I don't understand how people don't like water. And I've been hearing that a lot more lately and it's it's concerning. How do y'all not like water? Like what? But like I cannot even live without water. But yeah. If we are talking cocktails, I would say espresso martini or margarita. And then if it's non-alcoholic, definitely water with lemon or a Charlotte Temple, which is just Sprite and cherry juice. What's a day in the life like for you? A day in the life for me is pretty like routine. Honestly, I do the same things every day. I wake up around like 7 a.m. I'm at work for 8. I... And at work and then after work I'll go to the gym or to walk or both and then um, usually on Mondays I cook either Mondays or Tuesdays I cook so I'll either cook when I'm at home or we'll be eating like leftovers once we get home but I cook on like a Monday or Tuesday and then again on like a Wednesday um, and then, you know, I'll either hang out with my husband or I go hang out with my, with my mom or my sister or hang out by their house for a little while. Um, I, what do I do? I, I am a business owner, as y'all know, so I'm never really off. So usually once I get home and I'm settled and I've taken my shower and we've ate and we're just chilling, I'm on my computer doing something work-wise or... I'm editing a video or I'm working on a new like something for the business or you know talking to vendors or it's always something so I feel like I'm never really not working what are your upcoming travel plans so what do we have planned so I am going to Cabo for the first time which I'm really excited about for a destination wedding for some friends of ours so that's exciting we're doing that and then we also where else am i going i don't really have much planned i know i will be doing a few more things this summer um i know we're going to houston a few times we are going to the beach i'm sure um and then i really want to do a trip to either napa or austin this summer so we'll see but my tricks are always unless it's like something big it's always kind of random so i know something will come up i don't have anything else like planned right now even like the trips i just mentioned to napa and austin they're not scheduled i just know i want to do one of the two so we'll see i base all of my trips on like ticket prices and like when they go on sale and like how good i can get a flight for so if i see like a good plane ticket the door okay um but yeah that's what i have coming up so far love your content can you talk more about your career journey progress and tips for stylists oh i love that question so yeah i um let's talk about like my journey so i started really doing hair in um high school i was doing hair in high school is and it all started kind of i went natural and I started doing like all these different styles and trying different things on my hair. And it really started with um, like Marley twists, I think. Sit break. It kind of warmed up sitting in here. I wish I would have drank it while it was cold. Um, but yeah, I started doing hair in high school and I went natural. Started doing all the things in my hair. And then I started like recording it. And putting it on YouTube and, you know, doing little tutorials and stuff like that. And then I started doing Marley twists and doing that on my hair. But still never really considered myself, like, a hairstylist or, like, never knew I wanted to do hair, really. And then it just became, like, bigger and bigger. And I started getting more and more clients. It started to be just, like, a little side hustle for me while I was in high school. And then I started really enjoying it, especially, like, going natural and, and doing different things with my hair, trying different products, different styles, seeing how my hair would come out, you know, recording it, posting it on Instagram. Like this, that, that's how I kind of got into like the whole social media and loving social, me social media, loving YouTube is when I went natural. So I used to do like tutorials and stuff on YouTube. They're still on here if y'all, <laughs> if you just so wanna 
scroll down and watch them. They're probably so cringy, but <laughs> they are on here still. But that was my thing, and I would I love that kind of stuff. So I started posting. But um, yeah, and then I after that, after I graduated high school, see I was taking clients at my house. I was a kitchen titian, but I had like turned my dad's office in our house into like my little beauty room and he let me do that and he was you know real supportive and they helped me do all kind of stuff they even allowed me to like take clients at the house and you know i would do my marlins was there and then i started eventually doing natural hair and i was washing my clients in the sink <laughs> and doing all kind of stuff that you know that's how you got it sometimes you got to start like that and i started you know just kind of building my business from there and then straight out of high school i went to hair school i went to cosmetology school and i went to paul mitchell so i was in paul mitchell from 2017 i think it was like may 2017 i went right after high school or august in may or august and um yeah from from August of 2017 to like December of 2018, I was in cosmetology school and I went to Paul Mitchell, like I said, and I did really good in, in hair school. And you could kind of tell that that was my thing, especially in school, you know, um, it was just pretty obvious. And even like uh, my teachers and the clients that I took in hair school would really helped me to see that you know this is this is what you love this is your thing so I think I kind of just stuck with it it became it wasn't a job to me I just loved it I love talking to people I love making people feel better about themselves I loved helping people and giving them like a, a um, guidance you know in like a pad for their hair a, a healthy hair journey getting their hair back on track I love that so and I was able to see my work kind of just like play out and it was satisfying it was very rewarding so yeah, I just really loved it. And then after hair school, I went straight to take my state board. And before I could even finish my state board, I got accepted into a salon suite. Um, not the ones that I'm in now, but into another salon suite in the area. And I knew from even before I even finished hair school that I wanted to go on to be, you know, on my own. And I heard all of the do's and don'ts and you know don't do this it's not a good idea you're ruining your career or you know like you won't make it if you do it on your own you don't have the guaranteed clientele da, da, da. but the truth is i did I, I was growing my clientele in high school and in hair school and i had the clientele already to really sustain you know myself and i was living at home so i didn't need you know any like substantial amount of income and it just grew really fast and I'm glad I took that faith that leap of faith I'm sorry and just did it on my own because I don't think I would have been like to where I am right now if I would have been afraid I guess so I heard a lot of you know you should go work with somebody first you should learn and you know be under somebody and I, I think that's great too I think it just depends on the person and I was always a, a very independent person I wanted to be on my own and I've learned so much I was forced to learn I was forced to grow and I would I would recommend that to anybody that feels like they can or if that's your desire and you and you're willing to work hard enough and push yourself to learn the business and learn everything on your own because that's what it's gonna be. Go for it. If you want to be independent, like you know, an independent stylist, I think it's a great career move if you're ready for that. Because it does come with a lot. And it comes with a lot of learning and teaching yourself and learning the ropes and you know building your own brand that practically so yeah and i still have a and i say all of that but i still have a lot of ways to go i'm nowhere near like where i would like to be but i'm but i feel like i've done a really good job for myself so i'm proud of myself and i feel like anybody can do it honestly but yeah other than that i was always a very business-minded person i was always starting a business i was always selling something to somebody you know i remember i used to sell 
lip gloss I used to make and sell lip gloss in high school or maybe not in high school um middle school I was ordering packaging and um there are all kinds of stuff I came up with like I used to start I sold I've sold so many things and started so many different businesses that I just knew that I always wanted to you know work for myself and create either a product or like a service and be able to service people and create it to be something that I would want to um, use if I was a consumer. So that's always been like my look into how I wanted to run my business. Like how would you want to be treated if you were in a salon coming to get your hair done? You know, like how would you want your visit to look? Growing up, I saw my dad. My dad has always been a business owner. He's a... Um, contractor and I or an electric he's an electrical contractor so I've always seen him running his business and you know at one point I worked for my dad and or honestly I worked for him a long time just like helping him out doing little things but I um you know I think it kind of was I was around it and I loved it and I loved just the idea of being your own boss and making your business what you want it to be. It just, but yeah, ever since 2018, I have been an independent hairstylist and salon suite um, owner. I don't know if you should, I should say, no, I am technically a salon owner because I do have my own salon, but it's not in, it's not like a standalone. I have a suite, but technically I own a business, a salon and um, yeah, I've been doing this for, what's that, 18? So yeah, technically I've been doing this for almost six years, which is crazy. But I love it and I wouldn't want it any other way. And I'm, I'm excited to just kind of expand my business into like different, you know, avenues and do different things with my career. So this is just one of them. My content is just like a avenue of my career so I'm excited to see what is next but I love that question thank you for asking but yeah if you're interested in becoming like a hairstylist or you're thinking about going to cosmetology school definitely let me know down below or in my dms we can talk I'll love to give you like some tips or like if you have any questions I love talking about that kind of stuff so definitely feel free the last question I'm going to do is, she said, starting your channel slash influencing and being consistent with it. Well, first of all, I really wouldn't consider myself an influencer because I feel like I honestly have not been consistent enough to grow in a substantial amount or like, I feel like I haven't been consistent enough to grow the way I could have. And, you know, I know that I could have, I have, I have the desire and like, the ideas to make my content much much better than what it is but I don't feel like I have put in the work enough yet to even really consider myself an influencer I would definitely say I'm a content creator but influencer I don't think I have that I don't think I got that yet you know <laughs> um I just like sharing what I'm doing and what I'm enjoying and things I love and just like you know sharing it with the other girls that like the things the same things but anyway that's neither here nor there um but yeah like I mentioned earlier I feel like I am struggling with figuring out exactly what I want to do on social media I as y'all know I'm a hairstylist like I said and I don't really but I don't really want to talk hair on social media I feel like I have my salon page for that and then other than that I want to talk lifestyle I want to talk beauty fashion you know vlogs i want to see what the girls are cooking i want to you know i want to show the girls what i bought at the grocery store trader joe's like i want to give you my recommendations like that is the type of creator i would like to be you know i want to show y'all where to find out the best home finds good deals on amazon like that's that is the type of content i enjoy watching and i think that's what i want to give y'all but i'm trying to figure out how to like make it I'm trying to figure out how exactly I want to make that come across 
on social media. So I'm trying to figure out how to blend all of those different things without doing too much. So I feel like that's sometimes how my content can come off. Like it's a little bit of everything and it can be a little overwhelming. So I'm, I want to kind of try to write it in and see exactly what I'm going for. But yeah, to go back to your question, she said starting your channel. I don't really know what she's asking per se, but I guess how did I start my channel? I started my channel, like I said, back when I was in high school, just like doing tutorials on my natural hair. And it kind of just became something that I let go of for years. And then I came back and wanted to, you know, do videos of me transitioning into like a professional stylist. And then it kind of just, that that desire kind of dwindled away. And it became more of, you know, like lifestyle and showing y'all my life and just like things that I enjoy, things I like. And stuff like that but yeah as far as being consistent i would say that's something that i'm still working on i feel like i found something that's obtainable to me and so far that's been once a week um, i'm trying to get up to two videos a week but I, I feel like in order to do that i have to know like what the heck else am i gonna post <laughs> other than my blog and like figure that out like i need to i need to be able to figure out my content which i think is what i'm struggling but I'm gonna work on it and I've been telling myself I'm gonna figure out an exact plan for my content and do it. I'm gonna figure out an exact plan for my content and do it. Like, I know what I wanna do. It's just all about like putting it together and making it something that people wanna watch. So, yeah. Okay, we're starting to look like a crazy person. So that means we're nearing the end. Um, I have, I think I'm gonna make this one more. All right, y'all, so I have my big old hair dryer right here that I brought from the shop. I got my AirPods, got my iPad, well, my computer, and also my iPad here. We about to do a good old, like, sit and hop into the computer, do some work, watch some videos while this dries. It'll probably need about two and a half hours, if I'm being real with you. My hair is super thick, and it takes forever to dry, so I'm going to just chill. I'm about to watch my little shows, <laughs> do some work, and I will come back when things are dry. So this is the final look, you guys. Let me know what you think down below. I haven't fluffed it out or anything, like I said in the beginning of the video. Um, and this little piece right here didn't dry all the way, but I was in a rush. Um, so I couldn't really sit under the dryer any longer. But I think it came out really cute. Tonight I'm gonna do a pineapple, which I'm gonna actually show y'all how I'm gonna sleep with it. Just pull it up. I made sure I took my shower and everything already. I'm gonna just do like a pineapple at the top of my head like this and it also helps to like stretch my roots out so I get a little more length and then I just leave my ends out and this is how I sleep and I put a bonnet on and call it a day so, yeah. so I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure you like comment and subscribe and I will see y'all in the next one bye Baby, I've been